All right, here we go. Welcome into Philadelphia Eagles now live right here on Chat Sports. I'm Chase Senior, and as always, no matter where you are or how you're tuned in, we appreciate all of you for making today's show a part of your day. In the next couple of minutes, about 11 minutes or so, if Nick Sirianni and Howie Roseman are on time, they're going to address the media for an end-of-the-season press conference, and we're going to air it right here live on Philadelphia Eagles. Now, with how the season ended, losing seven of eight games, Nick Sirianni's job came into question, Eagles electing to bring him back, but they've already let go of offensive coordinator Brian Johnson. They fired Sean Desai as well. Matt Patricia is moving on, and now the Eagles look ahead to the offseason. For the second consecutive year, they're going to have to hire a new offensive coordinator, a new defensive coordinator, and there are a lot of questions that both Nick Sirianni and Howie Roseman are going to have to answer in this press conference, and we'll air that again live right here on Eagles Now. Set to begin in about 10 minutes at 2.30 p.m. Eastern Time. So coming up today, in addition to that press conference, we're going to stay live, and I'm going to give you my takeaways from what Roseman and Sirianni both had to say. The Philadelphia Eagles this week also making 20 roster moves going into the offseason. We'll recap that. We're going to do a mailbag taking your questions, and Philadelphia already set to interview two people to take over for Brian Johnson. They did a virtual interview with Cliff Kingsbury, former Cardinals head coach, former Texas Tech head coach, Arizona with Kyler Murray, Texas Tech with Patrick Mahomes, and this past year worked under Lincoln Riley and with Caleb Williams as USC's quarterbacks coach. And then Gerard Johnson, the Texans offensive coordinator, also set to interview with Philadelphia as well to take over for Brian Johnson. And then on the defensive side of the ball, we're going to go through all of the names that we know as of right now who the Eagles are interested to take over for Sean Desai. First, let's get the comment section going. Nearly 400 people watching live in the early going, and we're just in standby mode right now, waiting for Sirianni and Roseman to take the dais and address the media from the Novacare complex. Do you agree? with the decision for the Philadelphia Eagles to bring back Nick Sirianni. Type A for agree, D for disagree. What do you think? And we'll start to give you some shout-outs here. King Xavier agree. Sean Summers disagrees. Unspoken words disagree. Carol agrees. Chris Scrag happy that Nick Sirianni is back. John Messina wanted to see the Eagles move on. Jake Lee Glad that Sirianni is returning for year number four. By the way, he did sign a five-year contract. So two years left on that deal. Jules disagrees. 626 disagrees. Fat Carson agrees. Yo Fasho agreeing as well. It's very close, and I'm also looking at our live poll right now, and it's 53% yes. The fans agree with the decision for Sirianni to come back. 47% they disagree and in a head coaching offseason, in which a lot of big names are available, it could have been an ideal time for owner Jeffrey Lurie to move on with Bill Belichick out there, Jim Harbaugh, a guy like Ben Johnson, who is the offensive coordinator for the Detroit Lions, who we'll see against the Niners in the NFC Championship game. Some really respected names and football minds out there, but Lurie deciding to move forward with Sirianni, who in three seasons, 34-17 and 17, as the Eagles head coach, playoff appearances in all three of those seasons, coming off that Super Bowl appearance less than a calendar year ago. Make sure you subscribe to us here on Philadelphia Eagles Now, by the way. You can get live shows like this, but also already we've had some great off-season content. And it's been received very well. I put together my perfect off-season plan. That picked up a lot of views. We went through 10 free agent targets that Philadelphia could sign. Still to come, some NFL draft content. We've been all over the coaching staff changes as well as the coordinator candidates who Philadelphia is either interested in interviewing or has interviewed, so that's why you hit that sub button. And if you're subscribed to us here on Eagles Now, I want everybody watching right now to type me down in the comment section. We want to show love to all of our real ones who rock with us and who watch the show on the daily. And we give you insightful, informative, entertaining Eagles analysis right here on Philadelphia Eagles Now. Who's subscribed? Jake Lee, Carol Hosey, Tanner Plummer, 
Jeff Snyder, Sean, King Javier, Justin Moore, Corey L. We have Matt, Alex Orlando, Roy Orozco, Nine Fours, Devin Baker, Lone Wolf, Lou D. How awesome is it to see everybody hanging out here with us? And do us a favor to support the show. Please make sure you hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. More than 400 people watching live. Nick Sirianni, Howie Roseman going to address the media in about six minutes or so if they're on time. Like the video if you're excited for what they're going to say. Couple of super chats to get to here. Andrew Nathan with the $2 donation. He wants to see Ron Rivera as defensive coordinator, Mike Caldwell as the linebackers coach and defensive assistant. So I disagree on Ron Rivera as defensive coordinator. I really wasn't impressed with what Washington did defensively when Rivera was the head coach, when he was with Carolina. They did have some Pretty good defensive units, but they also had some really good defensive players. Josh Norman was in his prime. Luke Keekley was really good there for a couple of years as well before his career was cut short because of a lot of head injuries, and Julius Peppers was balling out. So with good talent, Ron Rivera's defenses have done pretty well. I just want to see a younger, more innovative defensive mind and a young, innovative offensive mind to come in as both OC and DC, but I am with you on Mike Caldwell, not as defensive coordinator. He got fired by Doug Peterson. He was the DC there under Peterson the last two years, but linebacker specialty is his specialty. He actually played with the Eagles in the late 90s, early 2000s under Jim Johnson and Devin White, Levante David, when he was coaching linebackers with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, both all pros. Dennis Designs with the $10 Super Chat. Hey, Chase, are you live tonight too, or is this it? Dennis Designs, this is going to be it, but we're going to air the press conference with Sirianni and Howie Roseman coming up in about four minutes, and then we're going to stay live, react to it together, do a mailbag. We're going to do another segment talking about Eagles roster moves and get you up to date with all of the candidates that the Eagles are either interested in or have interviewed already. Speaking of Super Chats, here's our Super Chat menu. If you want to get them in right now, we obviously appreciate your support of the program here. All Super Chats get a shout-out. It's basically like sending us a tip, rectangular box with a dollar sign through it. $10, I'm giving you an Eagle Beer Cheers, which I owe for Dennis Designs. $20 or more, you get to sign the Philadelphia Eagles football alongside all of the other real ones. For a $50 Super Chat, I will do a Freedom Funnel with a Happy Dad. Not a sponsor, but should be. And $100 Super Chat, you enter the Bird's Nest Hall of Fame. Everybody this year who sent in a $100 Super Chat or more, we're going to put together an end screen, like a movie credit screen. Your name's going to go on there as a valued member and subscriber of Philadelphia Eagles now. So that right there is our Super Chat menu. We continue to wait for Nick Sirianni and Howie Roseman to address the media for their end-of-the-season press conference. In the meantime, we can take some of your questions here. How do you get involved? Hashtag Eagles or send in a super chat. And because Dennis Design sent in that 10 earlier, I'm giving you a beer cheer. Scott Bates is a first time super chatter. And anybody who sends in a first time donation to the show, you also get on the real one ball here. So Scott Bates, we're going to put your name on this football, if anybody else wants to send in a first-time Super Chat, we're also going to put you on the Philadelphia Eagles Real One Ball as well. We have 524 people watching live. Producer Chip on the ones and twos, as you can see right above me. I am Chase Sr., and again, we're live for this Nick Sirianni, Howie Roseman press conference. We are just standing by right now. Whenever they decide to take the podium, that's when we will air that press conference. We'll react to it live. And then we're going to do a mailbag to take your questions and your comments about what they had to say. And then we'll get you caught up on some coordinator candidates who the Eagles are interested in or have interviewed. If you're ready to hear from Nick Sirianni and Howie Roseman, I need everybody watching right now to hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. We have 95 likes with 530 people watching live right now. If you're a real one, if you like the show, if you love the birds, and you're excited to hear from the head coach and the general manager, I need everybody watching right now to like the video and show us some love. The more likes that we get, the more people who come in here, and the better that the show will be. 
Matt Levinson using the hashtag Eagles. And we could pop these up just momentarily here until we hear from Nick Sirianni and Howie Roseman. We're taking all of your questions, and if you send in a super chat, we will answer that right away. So Matt Levinson with this one, rocking the, I imagine, old school Jalen Hurts jersey or Darius Slade jersey. One of the two with the Eagles flag in the background. Love the profile picture there. Is it concerning that these reports are coming out saying Hurts is unapproachable at times and thinks he's the reason they struggled since it was reported that Hurts would change Brian Johnson's play? So this whole thing, Matt, was actually blown out of proportion. What happened was somebody on Jacob Media saw a quote from Britton Covey and twisted it and made it out to be something that it wasn't. And then Jeff McLean called them out because he did the original article. And then Britton Covey actually had to send a tweet out and say, I never said that Jalen Hurts was unapproachable. In fact, he's a tremendous leader and a great player and a great teammate. Hurts will go as far as having lunch with practice squad players. So that was kind of taken out of context there. But did he change some of the plays? For Brian Johnson, that was reported. And I imagine if the Eagles are paying Jalen Hurts $255 million, he had some input on the Eagles moving on from Brian Johnson, who he's known since he was four years old. Dragon with this one, Cliff Kingsbury is offensive coordinator. And Chase, who do you want as defensive coordinator if Jesse Minter denies to be defensive coordinator for the Eagles? So what I've heard is that the Eagles do have interest in Jesse Minter. I've been told that by sources. He's my number one candidate, the D.C. for Michigan, and we've talked about him a lot on the show. He's running a very, very creative, complex, new-age defense, which Mike McDonald is running with the Baltimore Ravens this year. Number one defense in the National Football League. I would like him. If the Eagles can't get him, I wouldn't hate a Don Wink Martindale coming in and Sirianni allowing that veteran coach to be the head coach of the defense. Denard Wilson is a younger mind who I wouldn't mind either. Um, you know, we've talked about the Georgia defensive coordinator. I wouldn't mind Nick Sirianni going with some young, innovative minds, but is he going to do that after he just failed in doing that with Sean Desai as well as Brian Johnson, who were inexperienced and it kind of cost Philadelphia? Jack Leak! A first-time Super Chat. We're going to talk about Cliff Kingsbury later on after the press conference. Jack Leak, a first-time Super Chatter. So we're going to put him on the Real One Football as well. Anytime anybody sends in a $10 or more Super Chat or you send in a first-time Super Chat, your name goes on the Real One Football. Millie 315, longtime supporter of the show. Chase, are there any candidates the Eagles have interviewed or are scheduled to interview that you don't like and don't want to see it get a job. Um, yeah, let's just talk about Cliff Kingsbury real quick. And we're going to do a further breakdown on Kingsbury here in just a little while. He has kind of failed upward a little bit in his coaching career. Couldn't win a lot with Patrick Mahomes at Texas Tech. His teams with the Arizona Cardinals and Kyler Murray collapsed at the end of the year after having success earlier in the year. And then he worked under Lincoln Riley, and Caleb Williams didn't play all that well this year. He is a Mike Leach air raid disciple. Shotgun formation, four receivers, one running back. At the college level, the air raid offenses throw between 65 and 75% of the time. Now, to Kingsbury's credit, he did adapt the scheme to a pro-level scheme. But here's where I'm concerned. The Eagles offense in 2023, fourth in RPOs, 32nd in motion, 32nd in under center rate, 31st in design rollout rate. The Cardinals under Kingsbury, 8th in RPO usage, 30th in motion, 32nd in under center rate, and 27th in design rollout rate. I look at offenses nowadays from guys like Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, Matt LaFleur, and they run a lot of pre-snap motion. They are creative, innovative offensive minds, and I think that's what Nick Sirianni needs. I'm just not sure if he's going to change the offense. He might be looking at Kingsbury and saying, you do a lot of the same things that I like. Let's incorporate those. Let's mesh minds, and let's join up in Philadelphia. Alex Orlando, he is a first-time Super Chatter as well. We're going to put him on the real one football. Plenty of first-timers today. Love to see it. Love to see it. You heard from producer Chip right there, and right now we are just awaiting 
Nick Sirianni and Howie Roseman to address the media. They're late. No surprise. These things always run a little bit late. Jake Lee, $1 Super Chat. He is also a first-timer. If anybody sends in a $50 Super Chat right now, I will do a happy dad out of the Freedom Funnel right before the Nick Sirianni Howie Roseman press conference because we're just built different here at Chat Sports. We like to have a lot of fun. So let's put, we put Jack Leak on here earlier, and now Jake Lee is a first time ah, super chatter on the real one ball. Albert Pastrana, $2 super chat. Love the show. First timer and a defensive coordinator with linebacker experience. So Mike Caldwell, former Jags defensive coordinator, Eagles said to be interested in him. We're not sure if it's as the DC or linebackers coach. I hope that they bring him in as a linebackers coach, played under Jim Johnson, late 90s, early 2000s with Philadelphia, and then this is what I want Howie Roseman to do. Sign Patrick Queen, trap Jeremiah Trotter Jr., Mike Caldwell's the same position coach who with the Buccaneers coaching linebackers turned Devin White as well as Levante David into all pros. I like that right there, Elbert. Waffle Crusher with the dollar super chat as well. We're up to $19 in super chats. And again, 700 people watching live right now. We're just waiting for Nick Sirianni and Howie Roseman to take the stand at the Novacare Complex in South Philadelphia. Continue to get your questions in using the hashtag Eagles. And Matt Levinson did say, Chase, my jersey I have on was actually a Matt Barkley jersey. But my favorite number is two, so I ripped the name, ripped the name plate off and stood on my name. Matt, you got a Matt Barkley jersey? That's about as diehard of an Eagles fan jersey purchase that I have ever seen in my life. I love it. It's hilarious, but I love it. Got some more Super Chats coming in. Close. He is a first time Super Chatter. So Close is going on the real one football here. And then we have T-Hop42 with the $2 Super Chat. T-Hop said, great show. Be blessed. Going back to that previous Super Chat, Frank Reich is offensive coordinator. I did talk about him yesterday on our Brian Johnson replacements. The thing and the issue that I have with Frank Reich, same offensive vision as Nick Sirianni. And with Indianapolis, with Carolina, I saw nothing that was innovative, that was creative, that was new age with modern day concepts. And because him and Sirianni are so close, could that lead to the Eagles offense continuing to be stagnant and mundane? That's what I don't want to see. Albert Pastrana with the $2 Super Chat. Love that. Thank you. And oh! oh! Jason Blessing giving us a blessing here on Eagles now. That's a $50 Super Chat. Cowboys suck. Eagles for life. Drink up, Playboy. How about them Cowboys? To see them choke again was absolutely terrific. And I'm filling up the... Uh, freedom funnel here and isn't it hilarious with all the shit that Cowboys fans talked that the Eagles still outlasted them in the NFL playoffs like how fantastic is that and for them to go 28 years without making it to an NFC championship game you try to argue with them they're always going to say five rings five rings chat sports is based in Dallas Texas so I rock my Eagles jersey out all the time and people curse at me. They put their middle fingers in my face. They say F you. And I'm like, according to the national media, this only happens in Philadelphia. It's happening in Dallas. And they're always like, five rings. Well, how about this? Since 2000, because results matter. This is a results-driven business. Since 2000, the Eagles have the second most playoff wins behind the Patriots. And they've made it to seven NFC Championship games and three Super Bowls. What have the Cowboys done? Zero NFC titles since that time frame. Zero Super Bowl appearances. Jason Blessing, thank you for the $50 blessing right here. And it's fitting we have the Freedom Funnel. We actually started using this on the show. And then Joe Rogan started using it on his podcast. I think he watches Philadelphia Eagles now. But cheers to the gang. Chug, 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 Ah. Jason Blessing, you're a real one. Tanner Plummer with the $2 Super Chat. What's up, guys? You all do great work. Love you. Go Birds. 
We love you as well, Tanner Plummer. And everybody here, thanks for supporting the show. Let's get those likes up a little bit. Nick Sirianni, Howie Roseman, they're late. We're waiting for them to address the media here. And as soon as they do, we're going to air that press conference live here on Eagles now. Can we get the 300 likes before they address the media? We're at 215 right now with 700 people watching live. So make sure you hit that thumbs up icon. Like the video if you're enjoying the show here. Miguel, $5 super chat. I need Rivera or Wink Martindale at defensive coordinator and Cliff Kingsbury or quarterbacks coach Gerard Johnson as the OC. I wouldn't like Rivera as a defensive consultant, as a guy who Jeffrey Lurie really likes because Rivera was on Andy Reid's staff under Jim Johnson, knows this organization, model citizen, great leader, players love him, defensive consultant, I'm all in. Linebackers coach, I'd even like him or Mike Caldwell. As a DC, I wouldn't love it. Wink Martindale would be my choice between him and Ron Rivera. And if I could choose between Cliff Kingsbury and Gerard Johnson, I would actually go Gerard Johnson because I don't love the air raid. I don't like Kingsbury's personality fit in Philadelphia. I don't like Jalen Hurts' fit in that system. Of note, Kingsbury, before the Eagles played the Cardinals, when Doug Peterson was the head coach, he said, I like number two. I recruited him. I could always tell that he was going to be something big because of his personality. Cool, calm, and collected. So there's a little bit of a connection there. But I just don't love the air raid system. And he runs a lot of RPOs. He doesn't run a lot of throws from under center. He did adjust his scheme where early on first year they didn't run it all that much. And that's the concern with the air raid, four wide receivers and a running back. Also doesn't utilize the tight end a lot, which I also don't like because you have Dallas Goddard. I like Gerard Johnson, though. The work that he did with C.J. Stroud this year, terrific. He's learned under Kyle Shanahan. He's learned under, under Kevin O'Connell. And he's learned under Bobby Slowick who was the pass game coordinator under Kyle Shanahan last year. Those are the types of modern concepts that I'm talking about here that I want to see Nick Sirianni bring to the table with the new OC, and he needs to alter, he needs to adjust his offensive system. Flock Eagles with the dollar super chat. We're putting you on the real one football right here. Yes, sir. Because you're a first-time super chatter, and Dennis Designs, is also going on here, too, because he sent in the $10 Super Chat. And then we had that $50 Super Chat come in from our guy, Jason Blessing. And we're going to put him in a premium spot here. Jason Blessing. You're starting off the new plate of the football here with that $50 Super Chat. Here's our Super Chat menu as we await Nick Sirianni. And Howie Roseman addressing the media. All Super Chats get a shout-out. $10, Eagle Beer Cheers. $20, you sign the football. $50, a Freedom Funnel. $100, Bird's Nest Hall of Fame. Continue to get those questions in using hashtag Eagles. And we'll continue to take your questions up until this press conference here. Millie 315, is it more likely we draft a running back or a signed Swift back? I would kind of like to reset the running back clock a little bit. You get a running back on a rookie contract. You know he's going to be here for the next four years. And you get a young, dynamic player. The press conference is delayed, according to the Eagles. We'll keep you posted with any new updates. So we're going to continue to kind of chop it up here and wait it out, as of course it's delayed. Um, I would draft the running back, Millie, and I would reset the running back clock I would also think about bringing DeAndre Swift back. And it was absolutely criminal that Brian Johnson only had DeAndre Swift run more than 20 times, two times this year. Such a gifted back, even despite the lack of carries. He was top 10 in rushing yards this year. And he was the closest thing to LaShawn McCoy that we've seen for Philadelphia. And you got to do a better job of getting the ball in the hands of your playmakers. And... The Eagles didn't do a good enough job of that this year. Lone Wolf, thoughts on Eric Bieniemy? Yeah, I wouldn't hate Eric Bieniemy. I think that the Chiefs offense without him, even though Andy Reid calls the plays, has taken a little bit of a nosedive this year. Part of that is because Patrick Mahomes doesn't have a lot of weapons, but the difference between Eric Bieniemy and Matt Nagy, I think we're seeing it on that offensive staff. I thought he elevated 
Sam Howe a lot this past year, and I don't think that Sam Howe is all that good. And despite them having a horrific, horrible offensive line, Howe was able to have some success with some really good wide receivers. They didn't run it as much as I would like, but Eric Bieniemy was a running back, so he does understand the value of having to run the football. Peter Thurmond, a $10 super chat from a real one. Always love to point out the profile picture for Peter. He's at Lincoln Financial Field here wearing one of our real one chat sports shirts. All right, how long is this press conference getting delayed here? Let's see. Apparently, Sirianni and Roseman are in a meeting right now. Sirianni and Roseman are in a meeting. That's why we're on standby. Unbelievable. Where did you huh. see that? Um, came in, I saw it on Twitter from... From Martin Frank. Okay, so I went to Temple University, and when I was there, Fran Dunphy was the head basketball coach, and he always had a saying. He would always say, if you're early, you're on time. If you're on time, you're late. And if you're late, you're an asshole. That's what he would always say. So at some point, Howie Roseman and Nick Sirianni are going to address the media. I am not calling Nick Sirianni Howie Roseman assholes. I'm just passing along what Fran Dunphy would tell us if we came late to a media gathering or a practice or what he would say to his players. Obviously, these things are never on time, and a meeting with Sirianni and Howie Roseman obviously always take precedent. Peter Thurmond, you're an absolute legend. You know what? Let's do this. 50% off. Anybody who sends in a $10 Super Chat the rest of the show, you're going on the football here. So let's put Peter Thurmond on here. How insane would that be? That meeting is a disagreement between Sirianni and Howie Roseman, and then only Roseman comes out to address the media, and he's like, yeah, I just fired Nick. How crazy would that be? Waffle Crusher, $2 super chat. Had to send in another super. Love you guys for real. Hey, man, we love you too, and because you were so kind, we're going to put your name on this real one ball because you've been supporting the show for a really long time. Waffle Crusher. I saw a great tweet, too, from Eagles Nation. Imagine that Nick Sirianni and Howie Roseman walk out to the press conference with whoever the new OCDC is, like a gender reveal party. And there's a bunch of confetti, and they walk out. All right, we hired Gerard Johnson, Don Wink Martindale. Here we go. Kelly Knock, $2 super chat. Thank you for that $2 donation. Certainly appreciate that. So as we wait for Sirianni and Roseman, use the hashtag Eagles or send in a super chat. We'll just continue to take your questions in the lead up to this presser here. We're already at $97 in super chats. Who's going to send in the three to get us over the century mark here? John Odom, Eagles chat. Now, would you want G.J. Kinney and what do you think he would bring? So it's funny that you say that. I've talked about G.J. Kinney a lot here on the show. He'd be my number one offensive coordinator candidate. And I had a list of 10 candidates on yesterday's show. And it included G.J. Kinney as my number one, but also Cliff Kingsbury on there, as well as Gerard Johnson. They interviewed Kingsbury yesterday virtually. They're going to interview Gerard Johnson. And we'll see if they're smart. And they interviewed G.J. Kinney, who's the current Texas State head coach, putting up crazy offensive numbers. He'd be able to bring a lot of modern-day concepts to Philadelphia. And then before that, he was with Incarnate Word, and they put up crazy offensive numbers there as well. So I'd really like G.J. Kinney. I hope that they're smart. And if I go three for three so far on these coordinator interviews, does that mean that Sirianni, Howie Roseman, Jeffrey Lurie are watching the show? Maybe. They're, they're, they're tapping into my football knowledge. How about Matt Levinson here? I like this. Give me Mike Vrabel or Don Wink Martindale as defensive coordinator. So if Mike Vrabel doesn't get a head coaching job, and they're starting to dry up, like Raiders' job off the board, looks like Jim Harbaugh might get the Chargers' job, although he has a second interview with Atlanta. If Atlanta doesn't hire Harbaugh, I think they go Bill Belichick. Commanders, I think, go with Ben Johnson. That's my prediction there. You had... Callahan, Brian Callahan going to the Tennessee Titans. The Raiders bring back Antonio Pierce. Where does that leave Mike Vrabel? And I've said this a couple of times here on Eagles now. I would give Mike Vrabel $5 million 
to be the defensive coordinator. I'm not even kidding. I'd give him $5 million to be the DC, wait it out, bulk up this defense, and next year you up your stock, and then you get your head coaching job during next year's cycle. Mike Vrabel is a terrific coach in this league. I thought it was a crime that Tennessee moved on from him, and you're going to go from Mike Vrabel to Brian Callahan? Didn't make a lot of sense to me. Continuing on with Matt here, I just want coordinators that will have creativity and get this defense back to what it used to be. I never thought that we would say this either, Matt. We miss Jonathan Gannon. The Eagles miss Jonathan Gannon, and I never thought that that would be the case, but this defense was so unorganized, disjointed, poorly coached, and they have some good players on that defense, but they were not maximized or put into positions to succeed. It's unfortunate. Now, $2 Super Chat. I went Clint Kubiak and Wink. So Clint Kubiak, another one of my leading candidates. He was in my top five pass game coordinator for San Francisco. And what they've been able to do with Brock Purdy, Clint Kubiak also has experience calling plays. He did that last year after Nathaniel Hackett got fired. Anybody from the Kyle Shanahan tree, I'd be down with. And again, Sirianni can't be stubborn here. He has to understand that going into year four of five of his contract for being all, after being on the hot seat, losing seven of eight down the stretch, he needs to refine and adjust his offense because the league has adjusted to his offense, and that's partially why this unit really, really struggled this year. Tanner Plummer, hey, Chase, I felt like the offensive line was soft last year. Do you agree? I don't necessarily agree with that. I think what it came down to was the awful play calling. They didn't run the football enough. Again, DeAndre Swift is an extremely gifted running back in this league, right? He had more than 20 carries twice this year. So you didn't even give this offensive line an opportunity to get downhill, to get out on those pull blocks in space on that second and third level to do what they do best. You threw it far too many times. Now, I get it, right? You're paying a quarterback 255 mil. He finished runner-up for MVP last year. And he's a special player when the play calling, the play designs are a little bit better. But you got to run the football because that's the backbone, that's the strength of this team. And in not doing so, I think what happened is that we didn't get to see this offensive line get in a rhythm and eat. But they didn't play as well also, Tanner, as they did last year either. Cosmic Zeno, do you think this offensive coordinator and defensive coordinator repairs worth it? or no, and how do you feel about it? Um, I think what you're trying to ask me, do I think that a new OC and DC, if you hit on those hires, can get this team back on track? No doubt about it, for sure. Yeah, I think a new OC, a better play caller, think about play calling as an art, right? Brian Johnson lacked that art. And I agreed with the decision to elevate him from quarterback's coach to OC. The Eagles wanted continuity. They're very high on Brian Johnson. He's known Jalen Hurts since he was four years old. He did great work with Kyle Trask at Florida, Dak Prescott at Mississippi State. He was the youngest play caller in college football when he was at Utah. When he climbed the coaching ranks, he did so deservedly so. He just wasn't good this year. Now, he did have to operate within the confines of Nick Sirianni's system, but again, he's the one calling the plays. And when you stray away from the run and you don't maximize your weapons or the key players on your team and you don't tap into your strengths, which is running the football, that is on the play caller. And when you get inside the red zone and you falter, that's on the play caller. So I think that if you bring in a good OC, this offense still has Dallas Goddard, A.J. Brown, Devontae Smith. We'll see what happens at running back. Jalen Hurts is still a really good quarterback who had, what, 38 total touchdowns this year. And let me ask you this, Cosmic. What would have happened if Shane Steichen was the OC? There's no way that this Eagles offense is as bad this year as it was. Shane Steichen, with a top five roster and with Gardner Minshew, nearly won the AFC South, and they went up until week 17 before they were ousted from a playoff berth in a winner go home game. Think about that. So if you had Steichen, offense is better. So that's OC. And then defensive coordinator, you got to get a DC in here 
who's going to be able to bring the best out of Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis. Matt Patricia, what the F were you doing having Hassan Reddick drop back in coverage? It just doesn't make sense at all. What are you doing having Jackson Smith and Jigba guarded by James Bradbury one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside with no safety help? That's how you lost that Seahawks game. Like some of the things that Matt, uh, Matt Patricia did, Sean Desai did, that Brian Johnson did, they just didn't make a lot of sense. And coaching is really, really important. Fundamentals, play calling, system, scheme, nuances, the art. I do believe that this Eagles team can be elite once again next year. Why? They have elite players. D. Waters, $2 super chat. What about Zach Robinson as offensive coordinator? Yeah, so he's come up under Sean McVay, and he's their quarterback's coach and pass game coordinator. And you look at how Matthew Stafford has played. Obviously, he's always been a top-tier talent with great arm strength. But Baker Mayfield performed pretty well last year with the Rams. Carson Wentz in Week 18 against the Niners. I can't believe I'm saying this. He looked pretty damn good. So Zach Robinson is credited with that. Before he got hired by the Rams, too, he was scouting quarterbacks for pro football focus. So I like Zach Robinson, and I think that he would be able to bring some Sean McVay principles and Sean McVay play designs and that type of play calling to this Eagles team. And I'd be really excited to see what this Eagles offense would look like in a Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, Matt LaFleur type of system. And also, those guys like running the football. Philadelphia, they like running the football. Jose, what should the Eagles do in the draft in 2024? There's a lot they need to address. I think they need to address corner. I think they need to address linebacker. I wouldn't mind seeing them get a wide receiver three. I think you start to look ahead at the offensive line. Do you want to pay Landon Dickerson? What are you going to do at right guard? Is Tyler Steen your guy? If Jason Kelsey doesn't come back, it looks as though Cam Jurgens is going to be at center. Lane Johnson, how much time does he have left? But really, my main priorities for the Eagles this offseason, you got to finally invest in linebacker. You just have to. Invest in linebacker. Invest in safety. Invest in corner. They have a really good offense with some good offensive skill players. And those are kind of the areas of weakness, but you got to get OCDC right. Or at the end of the day, as we saw this past year, it won't really matter. Sean, what's your opinion on Bumberry? It's funny that you say that. I also call him Burtberry. I personally think that he should be benched to Ringo or Rex. And the issue with James Bradbury is that they signed him to that contract in free agency last year. And I've never really seen a corner age so quickly overnight like James Bradbury. He got cooked overnight. It's like the ghost of Juju Smith-Schuster, like the Monstars in Space Jam just zapped his talent. He was so bad this year. So bad to the point where in that Bucks game, Matt Patricia was going with... Keely Ringo and Eli Ricks at points more than James Bradbury. I think you try to find a way to move on. Best way to do that is probably a post-June 1 cut. Cosmic again, how do you feel about the new opponents that the Eagles have next year? If you don't know, check the Eagles channel. Pro, we already got you covered. Producer Chip, he had this in the canister. He loaded up the arrow. He shot that thing. Home opponents... Of course, you have the divisional teams, Dallas Cowboys, New York Giants, Washington Commanders, and then the other opponents at home outside of that, Cleveland Browns, Atlanta Falcons, Carolina Panthers, Jacksonville Jaguars, hello again, Dougie P, Green Bay Packers, and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Now, you look at the divisional opponents, you like how you stack up with Dallas, New York, and Washington, Cleveland defense, very, very good. You should be able to beat Atlanta. We'll see what head coach they hire, whether it's Harbaugh or Bill Belichick. Panthers might be the worst roster in football. They probably are. Jacksonville, you should be able to beat the Jaguars. Green Bay, Jordan Love really turned a corner at the end of the year. That's going to be a difficult game. And in this Pennsylvania State rivalry, shout out to the Steagles back in the day during the World War. 
I like Philadelphia to beat the Steelers as well. And then on the road, you had the divisional opponents again. Dallas, New York, Washington. You got to go back to Tampa Bay. Rams on the road. Ravens on the road. Bengals on the road. Saints on the road. So outside of the division, look, you get your revenge on Tampa Bay. I can see that happening. I think the Rams are going to be a problem next year. Ravens are once again going to be a handful. That defense can always cause an offense like Philadelphia is a lot of trouble. Joe Burrow is going to be back with the Bengals. And then Saints, that's a difficult place to play in the Dome in New Orleans. So the away schedule, somewhat challenging. If you're ready to hear from Sirianni and Roseman, I want you to hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. We're just on standby at this point. They're late. 30-minute delay. They're going to start shortly is what we're hearing. That's what we're hearing. USA, USA said 2.30, it's 2.57. Hey, it ain't on us. We don't control when Sirianni and Howie Roseman address the media. But can we get some more Super Chats in before they address the media? Another 50. We'll do another Freedom Funnel here on the show. And I also owe some beer cheers to the people. So beer cheers to all of you. Yeah, so what we're hearing, they're going to start this press conference soon. They've been in a meeting, and that's why things up to this point have been delayed by 30 minutes. Gary, a $2 super chat. Do you think we need a big running back like LeGarrette Blunt? Gary, it's funny that you say that because I thought that Rashad Penny was going to be that, and then he wasn't active pretty much all year. By the way, Gary Ammons is a first time Super Chatter. So we're going to put Gary Ammons on the football here, and then I'll answer your question. Let's go, Gary. A lot of first-timers today. A lot of people want to hear. Oh, here we go. We're about to start? Yep. All right. Gary, yes, I do think they need a physical running back. I thought Rashad Penny was going to be that. I would draft the running back, reset the running back clock, get a back in here for the next four years. But for now... Nick Sirianni, Howie Roseman addressing the media right now for the end of the season press conference. Let's show it to you right now. All right. Nick Sirianni, Howie Roseman addressing the media right there. We have a lot of takeaways to get to after the head coach and general manager for Philadelphia taking a lot of very pertinent and very important questions. But this is fascinating here because while Sirianni and Roseman were talking with the media, a report broke from Adam Schefter and Jeremy Fowler of ESPN that Vic Fangio, defensive coordinator for the Dolphins, him and Miami are mutually parting ways, and Philadelphia expected to be the front runners for the D.C. that they actually wanted last year after Jonathan Gannon went to the Arizona Cardinals. But Philadelphia was not able to hire Vic Fangio at the time. And he didn't land the gig after being a consultant with the Eagles because of the Jonathan Gannon, Arizona Cardinals tampering situation. So, coming up, we're about to talk about that. We are going to do a mailbag, by the way, too. So make sure that you get those questions in, your comments in. What are your thoughts on what Sirianni, Howie Roseman just had to say? Let's react together. Use the hashtag Eagles. Better yet, send in a super chat. We're going to do that as segment number two, but segment number one, just some press conference takeaways after what went down as Howie Roseman, Nick Sirianni, addressing the media for the first time since the end of the year. Really appreciate everybody for being here with us. 1,100 people watching live right now. Fantastic audience. If you want to support the show for free, please make sure you hit that thumbs up icon, like the video, and if you're subscribed to the show, I want everybody to spam me right now. Let me get a sip of water, then we'll do those takeaways. Yeah, just go L3 podcast style, like we've done before. Lone Wolf, Pope, Young, Bleeds Green, on the chat right now, Don Ackerley throwing out Mike Vrabel as the defensive coordinator. We're about to get into it all. Please make sure you like the video. And with that, you ready to ride, Chip? Yeah, right off the top as scripted there and then sprinkling those weigh-ins and the prize picks um, as such within the segment. Cool. 
All right, let's do it. You're watching Philadelphia Eagles now live here on Chat Sports. Let's recap Nick Sirianni, Howie Roseman speaking with the media because there's plenty to get to. And is Vic Fangio going to be the defensive coordinator of the Eagles? Let's get it. All right, welcome into the show. You're watching Philadelphia Eagles now right here on Chat Sports. I'm Chase Sr., and no matter where you are or how you're tuned in, we appreciate you for making today's show a part of your day. So much to get to on today's show because Howie Roseman, Nick Sirianni just addressed the media for their end-of-the-season presser. Is a new offensive system coming to Philadelphia? And is Vic Fangio going to be hired as Eagles defensive coordinator? We're tackling that and a whole lot more. While Sirianni and Roseman were talking with the media, this news broke from ESPN's Adam Schefter that the Dolphins and Vic Fangio have mutually agreed to part ways. He was the defensive coordinator this past year, and Fangio now will be the top target for the Philadelphia Eagles to hire as their defensive coordinator, and a deal is expected. Miami is allowing Fangio to leave to be closer to his family in Pennsylvania. Fangio and the Eagles had an interest in working together in 2023, but the timing did not work out. This time it will. And Diana Rossini really just putting everything into context, and this is how we're all feeling. Vic Fangio out in Miami while the Eagles are meeting with the media. Love it when a plan comes together. We'll see if they make it work. Now, let's focus in here on Vic Fangio. He worked as a consultant with Philadelphia in 2022. The Eagles wanted to hire him to replace Jonathan Gannon. He's from Dunmore, the neighboring town of Scranton. Shout out to the 570. Used to work out there. And the Eagles could not hire him as defensive coordinator because of the Jonathan Gannon Cardinals tampering situation as he illegally was interviewing for the Arizona Cardinals head coaching job in the lead up to the Super Bowl. We haven't included Vic Fangio in our list of defensive coordinator candidates because he hasn't been available. But this would be a move that I would absolutely love. He's a veteran defensive mind. He has familiarity with this organization. He's very, very aggressive. He can be the head coach of the defense, and he's done a great job of maximizing players, putting them in a position to succeed. We didn't see that this year with Sean Desai or Matt Patricia when Hassan Reddick was dropping back in pass coverage. And this Eagles team does have some really solid defensive players. Hassan Reddick, Jalen Carter, Jordan Davis. We'll see if Fletcher Cox, Brandon Graham come back. Josh Schwett had a double-digit sack season. You have Darius Slay. You have Reed Blankenship at safety. Howie Roseman needs to address linebacker. He needs to address the situation with James Bradbury. But a better defensive coordinator can maximize this Eagles defensive unit. And here's where Miami ranked defensively this year. Points per game, 23.2, it was 22nd. But they suffered so many injuries on that side of the ball. Opposing yards per game, number 11th. Points per play, number 24. Opposing yards per play, ninth, third down percentage, 20th, fourth down conversion percentage, 14th, red zone, 26th. Not great, but again, so many injuries and a lack of personnel opposing touchdowns per game, 26th. But you look specifically at Miami against the run, number 11 in rush play percentage, number 8 in yards per rush, 12th in rushes per game, 7th in rushing yards per game and 20th in rushing touchdowns per game. And then against the pass, opposing completion percentage, 22nd. Yards per pass, 15th. Passes per game, 19th. Opposing passing yards per game at 15th. Interception thrown percentage at number 16. But the sack percentage, number two. And Philadelphia all year could not get after the quarterback. And with Vic Fangio, hopefully they're going to be able to do that. Please make sure you subscribe to the program anytime there's breaking news, anytime there's a big development that pertains to the Eagles. We cover it. We talk about it in a very informative, entertaining, and insightful way. So if you haven't subscribed to the largest independently run Eagles channel on YouTube, make sure you lock us in and you hit that subscribe button right now. Next, what I want to do is get to the takeaways 
from this Nick Sirianni, Howie Roseman end of the season press conference. There's certainly a lot to talk about. It seems as though a new offensive system is coming to the Eagles with fresh ideas, fresh concepts, and more of a modern offensive style. And this year, Nick Sirianni's offense became vanilla. It was mundane. It was predictable. The explosive plays were lacking. Brian Johnson didn't run the football enough. There wasn't a consistency within his play calling, and that's why the Eagles moved on. As for the decision for Brian Johnson to get fired, Nick Sirianni said, look, we evaluated things at the end of the year. We did what we thought was best at the time. Still believes that Brian Johnson is a great coach. He's going to have opportunities elsewhere. He's going to miss him. But he also added this, which is juicy, and it should have Eagles fans very, very excited. What we want to do as a team is grow, coming up with fresh ideas and doing things differently. And that's why we're moving on from Brian Johnson. We're going to bring in fresh ideas. The staff that's been with me has been together for three years, and we have to bring in a different perspective, a different offensive mindset. As for how willing he is to change the structure of the offense, he said he's willing to do things differently, to be a little bit more creative, and whoever the new coordinator is, they're going to bring, quote, fresh ideas, and we're going to combine that with what we've done well, what we do well, the personnel on this roster, and that's what the offense is really going to strive toward. So the translation to me, and then Chip, we can get the prize picks, it sounds like a new offensive scheme is coming to the Eagles, and that's a breath of fresh air. That's something that needs to happen. The Eagles were 32nd in pre-snap motion. They didn't have Jalen Hurts on the rollout all that often. And I do want to get to some Eagles offensive numbers here because they were fourth in RPO usage, which I don't have a huge problem with. But 32nd in motion, 32nd in under center rate, and 31st in design rollout rate. They also did target the middle area of the field, and hopefully this new offensive coordinator is going to be able to do that and you bring in a good OC, you get Vic Fangio, and the coaching for this team, I imagine, going to be a lot better from what we saw in the slide at the end of the year for this Eagles team. So with that, I ask you this. A lot of you watched the press conference. Some of you did not. Whether you did or did not, what's your confidence level in the Eagles to right the ship? High amount of confidence? medium level or low, type H, M, or L down below in the comment section right now. Today's Eagles Now is sponsored by Prize Picks, the largest independently run daily fantasy sports app in North America, and you can get a $100 deposit match at prizepicks.com slash CLNS, and make sure you use the code CLNS as well. It's daily fantasy sports made easy. You pick two or more players. You choose more or less on their projected stat lines. And sometimes for people who know ball, these selections can get really easy. Like the picks that we like for the AFC Championship game here. Justin Tucker, outside of Jake Elliott, probably the best field goal kicker in the game. Let's go more than a field goal and a half made. The Kansas City Chiefs defense is very, very good. And then Travis Kelsey, Sometimes the Ravens can be susceptible to giving up a lot of yards to the tight end position, even though their linebackers are pretty good. Travis Kelsey has been feeling it of late. Seems to be a lot healthier than he was earlier in the year. He's rejuvenated by this playoff berth. Let's go more than 64 and a half receiving yards for Travis Kelsey. Those are our picks for the AFC Championship game. You can make your picks or tell me at prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use the code CLNS. We'll put that link down below in the comment section and in the description of this video. So we continue to move forward with our takeaways from the Sirianni Roseman end of the year press conference. And it's so funny how the timing worked out because, of course, they were asked about defensive coordinator and what happened to Sean Desai as well as Matt Patricia. And then the news breaks that Vic Fangio is expected to land in Philadelphia. As for defensive coordinator Nick Sirianni, before the report came out, said we're looking for the best guy for the job, not harping specifically on a specific scheme. So he's not tied to a specific scheme offensively or defensively. I think that that's really big news here. He is willing to change his philosophy to bring in fresh ideas, and that's what's needed for this Eagles team moving forward. Howie Roseman 
sticking with the defense, was asked about addressing the linebacker position, and I didn't love the answer here because he didn't really say, we plan to go after that position group really hard this offseason. He said, we like N'Kobe Dean. Unfortunately, he got injured. And then he also added, yeah, we lost two linebackers in free agency in TJ Edwards and Kaiser White. It was certainly hard to lose both of them, and we missed both of those players. He also said, when you look back on tape, Zach Cunningham had a pretty good year. I get that Zach Cunningham had a pretty good year, and you tried to bring in Shaq Leonard. He's so clearly cooked. Nicholas Morrow cannot defend against the pass at all. My solution to the Eagles' defensive problems at linebacker. You signed Patrick Queen, great off-ball linebacker, never missed a game, really good instincts, flies around the field, a good off-ball linebacker, and it obviously depends on the scheme, and then you draft Jeremiah Trotter Jr. And that can be your linebacking duo for the foreseeable future. That's what I would do. On demoting Sean Desai, Sirianni um, did say that he went to Howie Roseman, and he said, this is what I'm thinking, and it was Sirianni's decision to do just that. As for Matt Patricia, he's not going to return to Philadelphia, and I agree with the decision. It's time to move on. But let's cut him some slack a little bit. Having Hassan Reddick drop back in coverage, idiotic. But, and Sirianni pointed this out, Patricia was trying to make things happen with a bad defense in Sean Desai's defensive scheme. It was too late in the year for Patricia to utilize his system. So Sirianni did admit he put Desai in a tough spot, as well as Matt Patricia. As for Sirianni talking about adjustments here, and I thought the media did a good job of asking him questions about this because he's been stubborn in his ways. He's a very confident guy, as we know. But Sirianni said, there are things I'll be adjusting, but based on a six-week stretch, you can't just overhaul everything because we have done things well here in Philadelphia. But some adjustments are needed. Jalen Hurts' role in moving on from offensive coordinator Brian Johnson Sirianni kind of beat around the bush, and then somebody had to ask him about that again. He said the new coordinator is going to be heavily involved in bringing in a scheme to run for us to function, and that scheme has to be catered to our players and quarterback. Hertz will be aware of what the OC search is because Sirianni said, we discuss everything. So obviously you have to bring in an offensive coordinator who is going to be able to match his system to your $255 million quarterback. But also, as far as Jalen Hurts playing a role in Brian Johnson's firing, I did get the indication that Hurts obviously knew kind of what was happening, and he was a part of that decision. That's just my opinion and my read on the situation. I also want to say this for fans out there, and I think people have to realize this, and Howie Roseman pointed this out. Before the 1-6 and six stretch at the end of the year, the Eagles were 26-5. and five. And it's very hard to do that in the National Football League. And I think that's a big reason why Sirianni is coming back. Under his watch, under his tutelage, the Eagles have done some really good things. They started off 10-1 and this year. Now, he missed on the offensive coordinator hiring. He missed on the D.C. hiring. And the end of the year, it was ugly. The Eagles failed to make adjustments. They looked like a disjointed team that was just done. They wanted to go to Cabo, and they wanted the offseason to be here. But let's not discredit Sirianni for what he's been able to do. The Eagles were playing in the Super Bowl less than a calendar year ago. Um, and for Sirianni, he said, look, at the end of the year, I had to pitch myself to Jeffrey Lurie and Howie Roseman. I had to pitch my plan and convince them I am still the right man for this organization. We have to reprove ourselves. And he said he's looking forward to doing that. And Howie also said the purpose of an exit meeting is to really take accountability and it's to gather information for the necessary changes that we have to make. So those are my takeaways from the Sirianni-Roseman end-of-the-season press conference. A little bit of a news dump within that, which is a huge deal in Philadelphia with Vic Fangio likely to be headed to the Philadelphia Eagles as their new defensive coordinator. With that, I ask you this before we hop on out of here for this segment. What's the most pressing need for the Eagles this offseason? Explain it for me down in the comment section and why right now. All right, we're only getting started here on Philadelphia Eagles now. We did a little buildup up until the press conference. We reacted to the press conference now. Let's all react together. Get those questions in. 
You listen to Sirianni and Roseman talk. Vic Fangio news comes out. I'm sure you have questions, and we have answers. So use the hashtag Eagles or send in a super chat to react all together live here on the show. And then after that, we have another segment planned for you. Eagles making multiple roster moves and an Eagles coordinator tracker. So hashtag Eagles or send in a super chat to get featured on the program live right here on Philadelphia Eagles now. Wow, we got to catch our questions, questions, baby. There's a lot that just happened over the last, I don't know, hour and change. Crazy. My goodness. I wonder and it was if, also uh, funny because Sirianni and Roseman were a half hour late. I was going to say, I wonder if that had anything to do with Fangio. Yeah. Yeah. And that's uh, why maybe they were, they were talking. I, I bet they were in that maybe meeting they talking, were talking about it. That's, I love that theory. I love that theory. All right. We, how are we doing on questions? Let's see. Get those questions in. Yeah. Hashtag Eagles or send Especially in the super chat. If you have questions about what you just saw here about yeah. this press conference. Roseman and Sirianni talking for about 40 minutes, 45 minutes or so. So if you have any questions about the direction of the Eagles, Vic Fangio, the offseason, draft free agency targets, get those questions in right now. We Hashtag do, uh, Eagles or Super Chat. We have a lot of the ones that we answered earlier. Okay, that yeah, were we can go before. back on that too. Uh, a lot of them still, you know, ring true. Tanner Plummer, Chase, give me a real one. Real one, roll call. What up, Tanner? Miles Smith, great question, but use the hashtag Eagles. There are so many comments that come through, so it allows Chip to kind of just filter through all of those questions and then pop up the ones that use hashtag Eagles. Probably not at this point. Yeah. If somebody asks about Fangio, of course, include that. Be like Mystic. You see what Mystic did using the hashtag Eagles. That's good stuff right there. Razor, the Razor 1171. Ask that question again. Use hashtag Eagle so we can get it up. Yeah. We All right, we can move forward that. with this mailbag. I imagine some questions are going to come in, and then we have some that were being asked during the presser and before the presser. Excited to chop it up with the Bird Gang here on Eagles now. Mark De Silva, not a bad point. Very disappointed. Vic Fangio is the author of the Ben But Don't Break Defense, which is horrible and has produced horrible results with our defense. Um, Sean Desai was a Vic Fangio disciple. But number two in sack percentage, I'm somewhat intrigued by that. D'Adrian Hawthorne, a $20 super chat coming in from DH. Real one. Fly, Eagles, fly. D'Adrian, great to hear from you. And because you sent in that $20 super chat, I'm actually going to put you on the real one ball. $20 or more, or if you're a first-time super chat or just coming across the show, you send in a super chat. We obviously appreciate that, but we'll put you on the real one ball here. DeAdrian Hawthorne going on the football. All right, DeAdrian. DeAdrian! All right. Let's move forward with our mailbag here again. Hashtag Eagles, like Ahmad Watkins just did. Or use the Super Chat function if you want to send us in a donation. Chip, you ready to rock? I'm ready to rock. Are Eagles fans ready to go? If that's the case, like the video, and let's get it. This is Philadelphia Eagles Now. I'm Chase Sr. Appreciate all of you for taking the time out of your day to watch the show on the largest independently run Philadelphia Eagles channel right here on YouTube. We really strive to give you the best Eagles analysis anywhere, whether it be written content, visual content, audio content. So we're always thankful that all of you give us a shot. Coming up on today's show, Nick Sirianni, Howie Roseman addressing the media on Wednesday and a lot of takeaways from that. And Eagles fans are going to react with their own comments as well as questions for me and we'll hang out together. First, want to lay the foundation. I also want to flush what happened in the 2023 season. Starting 10-1 and and then the Eagles completely collapsed down the stretch. And let's do that by taking a look at the Eagles' 2024 opponents. We're not sure specifically what the schedule is, but we do know the teams that the Eagles are going to face next year. Of course, they're going to play the division foes at home and on the road with the home and away. So Dallas Cowboys, New York Giants, Washington Commanders, they're always on the schedule. 
other teams on the schedule. We'll start off with the home teams here. Cleveland Browns, Atlanta Falcons, Carolina Panthers, Jacksonville Jaguars, Green Bay Packers, and Pittsburgh Steelers. Of those home games, the divisional games can go any way, and you like how Philadelphia still matches up with any teams in the NFC East. Browns game will be difficult because their defense is always really good. You should be able to beat Atlanta. Should beat the worst roster in the NFL in Carolina. Doug Peterson returns to the link. Only head coach in this franchise's history who's won a Super Bowl. But Eagles should be a better team than Jacksonville. Jordan Love really started to turn the corner, so that could be a difficult game. And then we get that Pennsylvania State rivalry with the Pittsburgh Steelers coming to Philly as well. Away games, again, divisional games, Cowboys, Giants, Commanders. You have to go on the road once again to Tampa to play the Buccaneers. Rams cross-country travel. Eagles just did that this year, so they'll do it again. Baltimore down I-95. That'll be a difficult game because Baltimore's a juggernaut. Joe Burrow on the road and then New Orleans Saints in the Dome. So a tough schedule, but as of right now, probably not as tough as a schedule as we saw last year, especially in the gauntlet. Now let's start to take some of your questions. Keep in mind that we're answering these on Wednesday. Lone Wolf, is Vic Fangio a good defensive coordinator? So during the end of the season press conference between Nick Sirianni and Howie Roseman, the news broke that Vic Fangio and the Dolphins were mutually agreeing to part ways, and Fangio becomes the leader for the D.C. position in Philadelphia and is expected to get hired. Keep in mind that context is very important here, and Miami suffered a load of injuries this year, making his job really, really difficult. Now, it's a cool story. He's from Dunmore, and that's the neighboring town to Scranton, worked as an Eagles consultant in 2022. Eagles wanted to hire him. They could not because of the Jonathan Gannon Cardinals tampering situation. So he goes to Miami, and the results were kind of all over the place. Points per game, 22nd. Yards per game, 11th. Points per play, 24th. Yards per play at number 9 Third down rate given up, 20th. Fourth down rate, 14th. Red zone, 26th. That's not great, but again, they suffered so many injuries on the defensive side of the ball. As for the Dolphins against the ground game, yards per rush, 8th. Rushes per game, 12th. So that's a good sample size there. Rushing yards per game at 7th. And then against the pass. Yards per pass, 15th. Passes per game, 19th, passing yards per game at 15th, sack percentage, 8.4%, number two in the NFL. I want to see a defensive coordinator come to Philadelphia who utilizes the talent to the Eagles' advantage, right? I don't want to see Hassan Reddick dropping back in coverage as an off-ball linebacker. That's not his strength. I want to see him on the edge, getting after the quarterback like he did last year when he was fourth in defensive player of the year voting, had 16 sacks, and was a menace in the playoffs. I want to see a defensive coordinator put Jalen Carter and Jordan Davis in a better position to succeed. I don't want to see a long sack drought for Josh Sweat, whose drought came to an end in that wild card game. I want to see better linebacker play, and hopefully Howie Roseman invests in that position. I don't want to see James Bradbury one-on-one -on -one against the shifty and quick Jackson Smith and Jigba with no safety help, which lost you the game in Seattle. And even though Sean Desai was a Vic Fangio disciple, Vic Fangio is Vic Fangio, and he's one of the better defensive minds in the game. If the Eagles get him, I really like it. Brian Thomas, given the lack of accountability this afternoon, what do you feel is the best way to right this ship? You know, I don't know if I disagree with that. Sirianni said, and I think this is the ultimate taking of accountability, right? Prior to this offseason, he's wanted to run his offensive system, his offensive system only. And now Sirianni's admitting that we're going to bring in a new offensive coordinator and we're open to fresh ideas, fresh concepts, and a new mind, a new approach to helping us improve offensively. And I think for a head coach who's very confident in how he sees the game of football, how he evaluates the game of football, bringing in a new C with the whole new system, it sounds like, that is taking accountability. Now, for Howie Roseman to say, we like N'Kobe Dean, Zach Cunningham played well, we lost two starting linebackers and TJ Edwards and Kaiser White, I didn't like that answer. you got to be able to bolster that linebacking position. And at safety and linebacker, the Eagles were in the bottom two or three 
in investing in those position groups, and it hurt this team this year. So hopefully they're accountable with some of their mistakes, and Sirianni talked about that. And I think that the future of this team is bright. Why is that, Brian Thomas? They still have elite players. Potential lethal performance, should the Eagles move away from a quarterback's coach turned OC, they seem to favor a heavy pass game. I don't think that we need that type of offense. I think it's really important for Philadelphia to get back to what they did well last year. It's running the football, that's running behind this great offensive line, and that's relying on the backbone of your offensive unit, and that is the offensive line. And then you establish that run, and it opens up the pass game for Jalen Hurts. Makes the RPO game easier. Hopefully this new OC runs more play action. That can help out Jalen Hurts. When you establish that run, the defense naturally starts to creep up to the line of scrimmage, and then you're able to hit them over the top with those deep balls, which Philadelphia tried to do a lot this year, but didn't do it at a high level of success because they weren't running the ball enough. DeAndre Swift had more than 20 carries twice this year. It's inexcusable for the player that he is. Now, I don't think that a quarterback's coach turned OC should be ignored entirely by the Eagles moving forward just because Brian Johnson didn't work out. Gerard Johnson, the Texans quarterback's coach who elevated C.J. Stroud, who's worked under Kyle Shanahan, Nick Sirianni, and Kevin O'Connell, I think he's a good offensive mind and a good option for this team. But will the Eagles go with the young coordinator at OC after they kind of failed in doing that with Brian Johnson? They already might go Vic Fangio as defensive coordinator, and that's a veteran option because the two young hires kind of failed them. Dirty D, Sirianni said they will change schemes, but can they get Fangio? At least he's the creator of the scheme. How do you feel about that? Uh, I feel good about Vic Fangio if he is the defensive coordinator, and I think it's a smart move to bring him in here. And I don't think he leaves Miami if a deal isn't already an under-the-table handshake type of arrangement. I think Vic Fangio, by the time this video comes out, uh, it might be the defensive coordinator. And if he is, I do like that idea. All right, let's get your confidence of the fan base here. If you think the Eagles can be Super Bowl contenders in 2024, I want you to hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. Think about some of the premier players that are on this roster. I'm smashing that thumbs up icon. Now it is the off season and the warmer months are coming. So if you want to support the show, look fresh and be as Philadelphia as it gets. Real John shirts are available. Head to chatsports.com slash real John. Now if you're a real one, you watch the show, you subscribe to the show. And if you're a real John, get yourself a shirt to be about that life. Kelly Green, Black, both colors available right now using that link down below. Again, chatsports.com slash realjohn. That link will be available in the show notes as well as in the comment section of this video. Ahmad Watkins, what wide receiver three would you like to get in the draft or free agency? It's a good question. And I talked about some potential wide receiver targets during our perfect offseason plan. And I want to bring that list back up because there was a couple of wide receivers who could fall to the Eagles either at the end of the first round, they picked 22nd, or they could get in the second or third round. You're looking at players like Brian Thomas, Troy Franklin, Lad McConkey's a slot, Devontae Walker, vertical threat, reminds me of Mike Wallace out of North Carolina, Keon Coleman, if you want that big body wide receiver who can climb the ladder, go up and get it. And Adonai Mitchell, I thought, was awesome at Texas. Um, so those are some receivers that you could look into. Wide receiver free agent targets, I think T. Higgins is going to be out of the Eagles' price range. The same can be said for Michael Pittman and Mike Evans. Do you go Hollywood Brown? I probably wouldn't. How about Calvin Ridley? I'm not sure he's going to secure a bag, but I wouldn't hate that. And him and Jalen Hurts obviously have a relationship going back to Alabama. Lone Wolf, thoughts on Eric Bieniemy? I think the Chiefs have certainly missed him this year, going from him to Matt Nagy. Patrick Mahomes didn't have as good of a year. Also, the wide receiver talent was not good, but the offense just looked out of rhythm. And I thought that Eric Bieniemy actually did a pretty good job of elevating Sam Howe, who I don't think is a starter in this league, for an offense that had an awful offensive line. And because of that, they couldn't really run the football all that much. Eric Bieniemy was a running back. So I would imagine he understands the importance of running the football. I also think that this is somewhat of note as well. Eric Bieniemy is known to be somewhat of an intense guy. 
And Jalen Hurts is always cool, calm, and collected. Sometimes a little bit too cool, calm, and collected. Do you want to bring in an OC who's going to light the fire under Jalen Hurts a little bit? I think that could be important. I think that could be advantageous for Hurts' development. Major blessings, $2 Super Chat. Not using Dallas Goddard more is a crime. It's absolutely a crime. And that's why I worry about bringing in a Cliff Kingsbury type of offensive coordinator because he's a Mike Leach air raid disciple. That's four wide receivers, one tight end, and a running back. And I'm not sure how much a tight end would be utilized in an offense like that. And Dallas Goddard is a very special talent at the tight end position. Doesn't make any sense to me why Brian Johnson and Nick Sirianni didn't try to target him more because a tight end could be a quarterback's best friend. Millie 315, is it more likely we draft the running back or assign Swift back? I'm not sure how much money DeAndre Swift is going to get because it's not like he's been an extremely durable player in his NFL career. He's played a lot of games, but the word out of Detroit is that they can never really count on him to be on the field consistently or give him a bunch of carries because he was banged up. But I thought he had a really good prove-it year with the Eagles. And I thought he played some really, really quality football. I thought he was the Eagles' most gifted running back since LaShawn McCoy. I wouldn't mind bringing him back. But Millie, I would also like to see the Eagles kind of reset the running back clock a little bit kind of like what they did with Miles Sanders, and let that running back be a part of this offense for the next four years on that rookie contract. If you made it until the end of the show, I want you to type real one right now. We always appreciate all of you who hang out and watch every second here on Eagles Now, and if you did that, give me a real one. All right, here's our Super Chat menu. If you so kindly want to donate to the show, all Super Chats will get a shout-out. $10, we're going to give you an Eagle beer cheers. $20, your name goes on the Eagles' real one football. $50 will take down a freedom funnel or do a shotgun. And $100 gets you into the Bird's Nest Hall of Fame. So that right there is our Super Chat menu. As we have one more segment to get to as well. Roll with it. Yeah, we can roll with it for now. Because a lot of that is offensive coordinator tracker. Go Birds 21. If you're not a bandwagon, type me. Hey, I like it, man. Yeah. Yeah. And maybe, I guess to make things safe, let's see here. Let's do, let's just to make things safe here. I'll move factor up. Right after that, OC tracker. Um, uh, that was going to be the Fangio one, but I put it in that other seg. Yeah. All right. Another segment coming your way. Thanks to everybody for being here. We've had almost 10,000 people join us throughout the afternoon, live for the Sirianni Howie Roseman press conference to recap the end of the season, the dysfunction, and what the Eagles have to do moving forward. We did a takeaway segment. We did a mailbag. And now our final segment of the show is going to be a good one. So let's do it. Coming up on today's Philadelphia Eagles, now the Birds making multiple roster moves going into the offseason, signing 20 players. We're also going to do an Eagles coordinator tracker. tracker. Who have the Eagles interviewed at offensive coordinator? Who are they going to interview at offensive coordinator? And, of course, an update on the Eagles' defensive coordinator search even after all of the reports came out that Vic Fangio most likely going to sign with Philadelphia to be their D.C. to take over for Sean Desai and Matt Patricia. First, let's hit story number one. Eagles making just a bevy of roster moves, recapping the year going into the 2024 offseason. They signed 20 players to reserve and future contracts. And Rutt's... Run through all of these players right now. Philadelphia signing defensive tackle Thomas Booker, tackle LaRaven Clark, wide receiver Shaquan Davis, 
Defensive tackle Noah Ellis, who is the brother of linebacker Christian Ellis, good special teamer, who got poached off the Eagles practice squad by the New England Patriots. Defensive back Makai Garner, who I thought had a pretty solid training camp and was elevated to the active roster a time or two. The same could be said for Mario Goodrich, another young DB on this roster. Wide receiver Jacob Harris. Wide receiver Griffin Hebert, who's an intriguing athlete who's kind of built like a short tight end, kind of in the form of a Trey Burton from back in the day, if you remember him, winner of the Super Bowl 52, and of course, a part of the Philly special. Teron Jackson, defensive end sign, Tight end E.J. Jenkins, linebacker Terrell Lewis, defensive back Tristan McCollum, who got activated to the Eagles active roster for that Buccaneers wild card game, defensive back Taiwan Mullen, Joseph Nagata, who I really liked throughout the preseason out of Clemson, a big bodied 50 fit, 50 50 catch type of wide receiver who can go up and get it, running back Lou Nichols, guard Jason Poe, who actually in the pre draft process two years ago, coming out of Mercer, worked out for teams as a fullback because he's so quick and athletic, he could play center as well as guard. The Eagles listing him as a guard. Used to be with the Niners practice squad before he came to Philadelphia. Linebacker Brandon Smith, he was elevated for a game out of Penn State. Lasita Smith, a center. Tackle Brett Toth and wide receiver Austin Watkins. A lot of these players, we're going to see many of them in Eagles training camp, having an opportunity to vie for an Eagles roster spot, 20 players signed to reserve and futures contracts. And look, this is why you subscribe to the show. If the Eagles make a big move, if they make a move on the periphery of this roster, we always cover it all. So make sure you lock us in and subscribe for daily offseason coverage of the birds. Coming up next here on the show, an Eagles offensive coordinator tracker. We have two names who the Eagles have either interviewed or are set to interview. Cliff Kingsbury, USC quarterbacks coach, and Gerard Johnson, the Texans quarterbacks coach. A lot of thoughts on both of these individuals as well as an update on the Eagles defensive coordinator position. But first, today's Eagles now is sponsored by Factor, America's number one ready-to-eat delivered right to your door meal delivery service. Get 50% off when you use the code EaglesChat50. My new running streak approaching 300 days, so I always want to make sure I'm fueling up with healthy, nutritious, flavorful food that's quality and tastes good. And I'm also really busy covering the NFL, covering the NBA, talking Eagles every single day. So I always am on the go, I'm on the grind, and I don't always have time to go to the grocery store, meal prep, cleaning up. A lot of shopping to do, so you can choose from dozens of options every single week, whether it's keto, veggie, protein, breakfast, lunch, dinner. Factor has smoothies as well, and the deal is awesome. Not only do you save time, you save money. Using the code EaglesChat50, with Factor, you pick your pre-made meals. They are prepped and cooked to perfection. You heat them up and you enjoy them. Factormeals.com slash EaglesChat50. To our Eagles OC tracker here, let's begin with Cliff Kingsbury. On Tuesday night, it was reported that the Eagles and him did a virtual interview. The background for Kingsbury, former Texas Tech head coach where he coached Patrick Mahomes, former Cardinals head coach where he coached Kyler Murray. He did recruit Jalen Hurts and told Doug Peterson when he was the head coach of the Cardinals that he really liked number two at the time before he changed his jersey number to number one. And because of Hertz's personality, he knew he was going to be a star because of the way that he carried himself. In 2023, Kingsbury did work under Lincoln Riley at USC and was the quarterback's coach for Caleb Williams. The red flags here is that he didn't win a lot of games at Texas Tech, and then he failed upward and got the Cardinals job. They had some late season collapses as his offenses failed to make adjustments. And then Caleb Williams didn't play all that well this year at USC. As for the offense that he would bring to Philadelphia, he's a Mike Leach air raid disciple. Four wide receiver sets, spread them out, a lot of vertical routes. You also operate at a shotgun with four receivers and one running back. My issue here is that at the college level, when you run the air raid, offenses on average run pass plays 65 to 70%, 75% of the time. So you're airing the football out a lot, a lot, a lot. 
and you're going away from the running game. What's also a concern? The lack of utilization of a tight end. And I think that Dallas Goddard is an important player as a blocker, as a pass catcher, and a very dangerous weapon for this Eagles offense. Now, to Kingsbury's credit, he's been able to adapt that scheme. And sometimes these air raid offenses, as noted, just completely ignore the running game, which you simply cannot do at the NFL level. But Kingsbury able to make some adjustments. Arizona ranked 19th in rushing attempts with 396 in his first year as head coach. The year before that, they were 28th. And then Kingsbury after that adjusted the offense and also the personnel improved to fit the attack more for the NFL by year two, the 2020 season. They ran the ball the six most times in the league. And then in 2021, they ran it the seventh most times in the league. So him making those adjustments, I think, is really important. But a lot of his philosophies fit with Nick Sirianni's philosophies. And in the end of the season press conference, Sirianni said, we want to bring in an offensive coordinator who brings fresh ideas and fresh concepts to the table. Eagles offense in 2023 was fourth in RPO usage, 32nd in motion, 32nd in under center rate, and 31st in design rollout rate. Under Kingsbury, here's where the Cardinals ranked. Eighth in RPO usage, 30th in motion, which I hate. Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, Matt LaFleur, Mike McDaniel, they run a lot of motion. It's smart. 32nd in under center rate, and then 27th in design rollout rate. These offensive thoughts, the philosophy, the scheme, I don't love it. I'm also not sure how much of a personality fit he would be for Philadelphia. He's kind of Mr. Hollywood, and I don't love the fit that Jalen Hurts would have in this offense. With that, I want to ask you this. Who's your top offensive coordinator candidate for Philadelphia in this cycle? G.J. Kinney I like. Zach Robinson I like. Clint Kubiak. All better options than the ones that we're talking about on today's show. But this is certainly an intriguing name here. Adam Schefter dropping this on Wednesday that Texans quarterback coach Gerard Johnson interviewed for the Eagles offensive coordinator job. And more info on Johnson. He played quarterback at Texas A&M under Mike Sherman at the time. He was on the Eagles practice squad in 2011. What comes to mind when you think about the 2011 Eagles? That was the dream team squad, which was awful. But I do like Johnson's coaching path. In 2017, he had the Bill Walsh Coaching Fellowship with the San Francisco 49ers. So he was under head coach Kyle Shanahan. He goes to the Colts Coaching Fellowship in 2019. Then he elevates where he worked alongside Nick Sirianni as an offensive quality control coach under Frank Reich for two seasons. And then he goes to the Minnesota Vikings last year under Kevin O'Connell, who I really, really like and he was the assistant quarterback's coach there. And then because he had some Kyle Shanahan ties, and because he was a valued offensive mind, he goes to the Houston Texans, hired by D'Amico Ryans, who was with the Niners as their defensive coordinator, who brought Bobby Slowick, who was the Niners' pass game coordinator on, as offensive coordinator, and Johnson is able to be a part of that Kyle Shanahan tree once again. So what's intriguing here about Gerard Johnson is that he understands different schemes from Shanahan to Sirianni to Kevin O'Connell, but this year he was really credited with the development of C.J. Stroud, who led the NFL in touchdown-to-interception ratio at 23-5, to and as a rookie he threw for more than 4,100 yards, completed 64% of his passes in Houston, the surprise team of the NFL this year, they made it to the divisional round of the playoffs and C.J. Stroud, but Gerard Johnson as his quarterback's coach, shredded and tore up Jim Schwartz's defense in the wild card round, and that is a vaunted, very, very talented and quality Cleveland Browns defense, and Gerard Johnson helped that development of C.J. Stroud. Young, innovative offensive mind right there. As for the Eagles defensive coordinator tracker, Vic Fangio is the leader in the clubhouse now to land with the Eagles as defensive coordinator after him and the Dolphins mutually agreed to part ways. Wants to be closer to his family as he grew up in Dunmore, Scranton area. So it looks as though he might get the job. 
But the Eagles have also shown interest in Don Wink Martindale, former Giants defensive coordinator, Ron Rivera, former Commanders head coach, and Mike Caldwell, former Jags defensive coordinator. For Caldwell, his specialty is with linebackers. And when he worked with the Tampa Bay Buccaneers as their linebackers coach, Devin White, Levante, David became all pros. What's maybe the biggest weakness on this Eagles team? Linebackers. So I would love for Mike Caldwell to be hired potentially as a linebackers coach. I think him coming in as a linebackers coach, and he actually played for the Philadelphia Eagles late 90s, early 2000s under Jim Johnson, that would be a really good move. For Ron Rivera, I don't like him as a fit for defensive coordinator, but I like him as a linebackers coach or a defensive consultant. His specialty also with linebackers because that's the position that he played. Luke Keekley with the Carolina Panthers, he was terrific. And Rivera has a lot of experience, 13 years as a head coach in the NFL. He also has worked with this organization before and is very valued by Jeffrey Lurie. They're both very close friends. And Ron Rivera worked under Jim Johnson as well as Andy Reid. And then you have Don Wake Martindale, who is in the running for a couple of other D.C. jobs. Very aggressive defensive scheme. Those Baltimore Ravens defenses were tremendous back in the day. So those are the coordinator candidates who the Eagles are interested in and or have interviewed up to this point in this offseason cycle. So he asked you earlier who you want to be the Eagles offensive coordinator. How about Eagles DC? Drop me a name down below in the comment section. Don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching the show. All right. Last call for Super Chats here. You have two minutes if you want to send in a donation to the show. And then we're going to sign off right after that. What a day. What a day. The off season, man. It's kicking in. It's just starting to. Just two minutes Super Chat shot clock. If you want to send in a Super Chat, here's our Super Chat menu. All Super Chats get a shout out. $10, Eagle Beer Cheers. I don't know if I owe y'all one, but here you go. I'm very excited to get these hires finalized to see kind of the direction this team's going to be moving exactly. in this offseason. Exactly. You get to understand what schemes might come to Philly. $20 gets you on the ball. $50 for a Freedom Funnel. $100, Bird's Nest Hall of Fame. Jake I will say, said, like, we're broke, you bums. Uh, hey, Jake, I'm sorry that you're living a miserable life, man, but you can cheer up. It's going to be okay. Come on, man. Come on, man. Jay Baked said, get Ron over Vic, please. Ah, uh, no, no, no. A lot of people have been hating on Vic in here. I don't, there's a lot of people that run his scheme that don't run it as well as he can. I think that's a lot of people see his scheme that's run across the league. Yeah. And a lot of people, like... Like uh, Joe Barry and, and Green Bay and stuff, they see all these schemes that, that don't work. But right. Fangio himself does it much better. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. All right. We're about to sign off here on Eagles now. Great show today. Aired the Nick Sirianni, Howie Roseman press conference. We did three segments right after that. It was a lot of fun. Our audience was spectacular. And again, this is what you can expect on Eagles now during the season and during the offseason with coverage coming your way every single day. For producer Chip, I'm Chase Senior for the Bird Gang. We'll catch you next time. Make sure you subscribe. Hit that bell icon. Turn on those notifications because whenever we go live, you will be notified. E-A-G-L-E-S, Eagles! We out. Peace.